So, Minister, let me start by saying um, this question that we're addressing today of whether or not to repurpose sanctioned Russian assets is going to be a key one for the G7 summit in June. What are you hoping for from that meeting? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In regards to today's video, it's a bit of a strange one as we're going to be listening to the liberal lord and savior of finance, Chrystia Freeland. Now she attended an event and as you heard from the opening question, they're trying to figure out how to repurpose the sanctioned Russian assets that have been frozen. Now I'm going to save you uh, her response to that uh, original question because it was extremely, extremely long. But I want you to hear some of the delusional things she said afterwards um, as the interview continued. And we're going to start with this question here. You said a lot about why Canada cares, but I want to, if you could just expand for a moment on why you, you have led a lot of this, why you care and why you have um, encouraged uh, Canadians generally to care about this issue and make the arguments so strongly and be the first to take such uh, a step in legislation? Um, well, you know, Bronwyn, I would actually say um, it's less about me and more about Canadians. Um, you know, we have some political differences um, even around this issue in Canada, but I would say actual Canadian people um, are very clear in the centrality of this issue and the importance of supporting Ukraine. It is hard for me. It rarely does a day pass that someone doesn't come up to me like on the sidewalk in an airport boarding lounge and either say, that's great what you're doing on Ukraine or more often, that's good, but Canada needs to do more. So there is like a strong public feeling. <laughs> Yeah, there is a strong public feeling. And you know what that feeling is? Stop sending our money to Ukraine. Like, help out the Canadians that are here that are struggling right now. Stop printing money. Stop sending unnecessary amounts. I don't know how she can delusionally say that she gets daily acknowledgement from people saying, uh, we love what you're doing for Ukraine, but more so saying, it's great, but you need to do more. I highly, highly doubt that that's even happening and the way she started off saying well you know what it's it's less about me and it's more about canadians that's total bs it's less about canadians and just about ukraine and you because you want to be some savior of some sort and i will preface that this interviewer does know freeland freeland disclosed earlier in the interview that her and uh, braun i believe her name was used to work at the Financial Times together. So there's a lot of history between these two. So I'm gonna guess she's giving her some softball questions. However, this next question, which I don't think Freeland even understands the question because she answered it in such a deranged way, is about the legality of taking the money that they've frozen and if it's even legal. Thanks for that. And while, as I said before, there, there isn't a Chatham House line on any issue, the arguments you've just made are ones uh, shared by many of our experts here. and They've made them very, very passionately, as have you. So let me ask you what you say to the two counter arguments against repurposing these, these assets. I'm pausing a bit over the word repurposing, which seems a actually marvelous euphemism, but um, taking uh, these assets uh, for Ukraine. Um, one argument is, look, it's illegal. Uh, in international law, and yes, Russia has uh, flagrantly broken international law in invading Ukraine twice, um, but uh, one only weakens international law by breaking another part of it. And then the second part would be, um, and, and Korean sets all of these out, but uh, the, the other one that he leads on, um, this jeopardizes the international financial system and the trust, the willingness of countries to put their assets in, uh, in dollars, or indeed in euros, um, because they may fear that they may not get those assets back. And that could push up everyone's interest rates and cost of doing all kinds of things. And so those, those, those two, uh, there, are, there are others, and I'm sure in this afternoon we're going to explore that. But the, these are the two challenges to the very uh, passionate argument that you have made. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, thank you very much, Bronwyn. And I think um, you're right. Those are the two big concerns we have to uh, wrestle with and be satisfied with our answers to um, in order to move forward. And I do think we need to take them seriously. Um, I think the case for supporting Ukraine is overwhelmingly strong. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I think we have the right to be in any way dismissive uh, of serious concerns raised about what we do and how we do it. Um, on the legal arguments, um, I am not a constitutional lawyer. I'm not any kind of lawyer. Um, and I think you're going to have lots of legal experts participating in the conversation. What I will say is it's something that we take very seriously in Canada and we've taken seriously in our approach to this. After all, the point here is to defend the rules-based international order. So it's important to do it properly. Um, I have been satisfied by the views of Canadian and international experts uh, that this action would fall well within um, international law, <laughs> that there is precedent and that it would be justified. Um, so, uh, but I'm going to leave it there. So here we have Braun telling Freeland that two wrongs don't make a right. Yes, Russia has invaded Ukraine, but that doesn't mean you get to freeze the assets and then take them, um, especially without any sort of ramifications, which there most likely will be. And Freeland goes on to say, well, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but yeah, I think we have the legal precedence to do so. Like this lady is absolutely delusional. And then the next portion, she says, we need to make sure that we all do it collectively so we can spread the blame. If everybody does it, who's to blame? So if you're confident of the strength of that legal precedent um, and crucially, provided that there is unity of action um, and therefore unity of risk sharing among the democratic allies, I have real confidence in the robustness of our financial systems. <laughs> like this is just pure mob mentality. Let's all gang up as one. Uh, there's more of us than there are of him. He can't fight us all. Like th this would be ganging up on one person and just throwing punches and kicking them and doing all that. That's not how this works. You froze the assets to make a point. That doesn't mean you get to keep them. Eventually, you got to give them back. <laughs> you don't just have the power to take them all. And then she has the audacity to say this. And crucially, Bronwyn, after the breach of the most fundamental rule for the rules-based international order, which is you don't invade another sovereign country and try to annex its territory and take it over. That's not a complicated rule that our international order is based on. We've been pretty good as an international community at following it, and it has been the basis, a, a fundamental basis of the sort of post-World War II, you know, era of um peace, prosperity, and growth, certainly for the non-geographic West. Now listen, I'm not for war. I'm not pro-Russia, pro-Ukraine, anything like that. But I'm pretty sure for like over 30 years now, Putin has been saying, don't move closer to our borders. Do not expand to the East. Don't move NATO's military closer to our borders, the missiles. Don't put Ukraine into NATO, which there was talks of it. And it's like you guys were just poking the bear for all this time. And now that he's mauling and attacking you back, you're crying, oh, my God, how could he do this? How could he do this? It's like he gave you fair warning and you didn't listen to it. And now you're getting the, uh, the, the brunt of it. But now Canadians are also having to deal with that because what are we doing? 
We're just funding this and funding it and funding it and selling them millions and billions of dollars. But you know what? Christia Freeland definitely knows how to deal with our money as she states here. Uh, absolutely. And thanks for bringing back, um, us back to that question of Ukrainians right now um, and the choices they're facing. Let me ask you whether you're concerned about the risk that money going in now, if it was coming in reparations or in, in, in assets um, that were repurposed, um, might be misused by corruption. It was a problem in Ukraine uh, to some extent before the war, and then you have the whole chaos of war and what it does to institutions on top of that. Look, uh, I am now a minister um, in a G7 country. I know how careful you need to be when spending the people's money. <laughs> this lady is so delusional and out to lunch. I can't believe she just <laughs> said that. She is so financially illiterate. She doesn't understand how to use money. And, and, and all they're doing is putting us more into deficit, more into deficit. <laughs> We're just falling so far behind financially. But she knows how important it is to handle the Canadian's money. Like, you can't make this comedy up. You'd think that that's what you were watching, a comedy movie, if you know who Christia Freeland is. But this is our finance minister. She is absolutely delusional and out to lunch. And not only that, she admits that she's going to continue sending Canadian money to go help fund the Ukraine. It's important for us. Um, it's important for Canadians. You know, we're talking right now about that Russian sovereign assets. But we have asked Canadians to contribute their own money to support Ukraine. And we have been doing that. And we will continue to do that. Part of the deal in doing that is I need to be able to say to Canadians, all of that money is going for the things that we sent it to Ukraine for. So that is important. For the things that we sent it to Ukraine for. And what exactly are those things, Ms. Freeland? Can you answer that question? Because I don't actually think you ask Canadians if they would like to send their money over there. I don't think a lot of Canadians are like, yeah, sign me up. Send my money over to Ukraine because we're struggling over here, but it's okay. Send it over there. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. As always, this is just my opinion on this whole thing. I just wanted to cover this because I don't think a lot of people saw this. This video has been up for 10 hours and there's only like 850 views on this video. So again, it's a little bit dense and I did have to weed through a lot of it. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you think about this whole situation. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.